will look at, which will be very, very handy for you to know, is the change in decline. And what I mean is, we get to the position where we played c5. d4, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3, and we play c5. Well, of course, d5, bishop takes c3 check, bc3, f5, and we have our Jinji Indian. But, one of the issues is, not everyone plays d5. Some players play e3. And basically, white has four ways of declining the Jinji Indian, as I call it. Now, earlier we looked at white avoiding the Jinji Indian with 2e4. Now we're going to look at white declining to play the Jinji Indian. And e3 is a very solid but rather timid approach by white. And we will look at two games from two former world champions, Mikhail Tal and Anatoly Karpov. That's what we will look at against e3 to give you some very good ideas of how to play and try to play to win with black. The next most popular is knight f3. There you want to play cd4, knight d4, knight c6. And after knight c2, I quite like playing bishop takes c3 check, b takes c3, and again we get a chance to play against double pawns. In this respect, I'm in very good company, and so are you, because Jinjin Hashvili recommends playing like this with black, and Vladimir Kramnik has also played like this with black. There we will see a super grandmaster rated over 2700 lose with the white pieces. Going back, much, much less rare than either e3 or knight f3, but still seen from time to time is d takes c5. And of course, most people don't take it seriously because they're, well, like, I can take on c3, and after bc3, white has ugly pawns, and they simply dismiss the matter. However, we will look at a few games where in this position, black has also played knight a6. And then last, a rather unusual, in fact, I only found one game where it had been played, but white did win in convincing manner, is the unusual bishop to e3. I call this the awkward bishop development, and I will show you my own special recipe. We'll take a brief look at that game that white won, and then I will show you my own special recipe for black maintaining an active, dynamically unbalanced position. So let's go back to e3. This is probably the most popular of the declined variations. When white players are confronted with black setup, they don't know what to do, and they're afraid to push d5, they play e3. The first game we're going to take a look at the game, Grandmaster Darcy Lima, rated 2475 feet A, and a very good friend of mine from years and years ago, Grandmaster Dmitry Gurevich, who at the time of this game was rated 2575. This was played in the Beale Interzonal in 1993. Now let's go back to the start. d4, g6, c4, Bishop g7, knight c3, c5, and now the very unusual but occasionally played d takes c5. Gurevich played knight a6. In the game, Darcy Lima played bishop d2. Grandmaster Fatachnik, commenting on the game in the informant, gives bishop to e3 and claims after queen a5, bishop d4, bishop takes, queen takes, knight f6. Of course, after queen takes, we have no time to capture on c5 because our rook is under attack. And after knight f6, e4, quote, plus over equal. That's informant speak for white has a slight edge. However, analyzing this position with Fritz, I quickly concluded that after knight takes c5, it's not white who has a slight edge because the pawn on e4 is threatened. We threaten simply just to take it because of the pin. And after knight c5, if white continues on with e5, then we have knight to b3. On a b3, note, if queen back to d1, we have queen e5 check, and so much for that. And after knight b3, if a takes b3, queen a1 check, knight d1, knight h5, e6, 
attacking our rook in the corner. No worries, we castle. After e takes d7, this frisky pawn does threaten to queen or capture our bishop on c8, but again, no worries, we simply chop it off. And after queen d7, rook at a to d8, we attack the pin knight, and after queen g4, we swing in with our own knight, knight to f4. And after knight h3, note of course queen f4, queen d1 would be mate. And after knight f4, knight h3, we play h5, gives the white queen a little nudge, back to f3, and then the powerful, quiet queen to c1. Of course, this threatens queen d2 mate. And after queen c1, white has to develop with bishop e2. We then go queen d2 check, king f1, knight takes e2, queen e2, and queen d1 check with an overwhelming material advantage. After queen e1, of course queen takes rook takes, wins even more. And after queen e1, we simply take queen takes b3, threatening rook d1. So going back to this position, where Fatachnik recommends bishop e3, queen a5, bishop d4, bishop takes, queen takes, knight f6, and e4, knight takes, I simply don't see what he's referring to in terms of an advantage for white. If anything, black is already a little better. And why not? Black has two knights developed and his queen. White has one knight developed and his queen. Going back to this position, instead of course e5, white could play castles. Then simply d6, stopping the e5 nonsense. After knight f3, castles, h3, bishop d7, black is ready with rook at f to c8, b5, or a6 if necessary, then b5. Black's play against the white king will come very, very rapidly. Again, Fritz and I both prefer black. So just a quick review. After d takes c5, knight a6, if bishop to e3, as recommended by Fatachnik in the informant, queen a5, bishop d4, you simply exchange, put your knight on f6, and after e4, you recover your pawn.